Hello, everybody. My name is Mary Gregory. I'm the director of the Danbury Schools and Business Collaborative. Welcome you to our webinar, one of um, one presentation in our webinar series. Um, today, I have with me Erica Haynes from the Connecticut School Finance Project. She's here to speak to us about school financing throughout the state of Connecticut and specifically um, related to Danbury and how that impacts our pupils here at Danbury Public Schools. So welcome, Erica. Thank you, Thank Mary. Mary. And, and here, here we go. Uh, um, so this is School Finance 101, and the intention is to help you understand how school finance works in the state of Connecticut, and more specifically, how school finance um, affects Danbury. Um, first, and first and foremost, foremost um, you can always, always reach out and contact us, particularly at the end of the webinar. If you have questions, you can certainly email Katie at katie.roy at ctschoolfinance.org, but you can always email me as well, Erica, E-R-I-K-A dot Haynes, H-A-Y-N-E-S, at ctschoolfinance.org. And check us out on the website, and you can always ask us questions. Um, before, before we really get started with how school finance works, I'd like you to just know a little bit about us. Um, so, so we were founded in 2014, um, um, and our goal is really to fix this broken school finance system. Um, the way the current system works is unfair to students, to schools, and communities across the state. And I, I think you'll see that as we go through this presentation. Um, our goal is also not just to fix the system, but to ensure that we are a trusted and nonpartisan independent source for accurate data and information. We're not, We're not a member-based member -based organization, organization, but um, we do encourage, encourage people to be active, active with school finance and understanding um, how it works and in having dialogue within your own communities and across the state. Um, we are committed to working with diverse groups of stakeholders, and we do work around the state. So you'll you'll see us working not just in Danbury, but um, all the way to the other side of the state, in Covington and Wyndham and Bridgeport and New Haven and everywhere in between. Um, so our goal is really to develop well thought out solutions to the current challenges um, and really incorporate the viewpoints and perspectives of all stakeholders. So, so our goals are, are, are there are three very simple, simple uh, straightforward goals. Um, one, of one of them is building knowledge about how the current school funding system works, and that's what we're doing here today. Um, the second is to bring stakeholders together who are impacted by how schools are funded, and to identify solutions to Connecticut school finance challenges. And essentially, those need to be fair to students and taxpayers and strengthen schools and communities. Um, they're, all they're all number one to us. I think they're, I think they're all, all important, so you can see that. Um, so, school so school finance, finance is about, about kids. kids. It's about, it's about schools. schools. And, and it's about, about communities. communities. And, and it's important, it's important to, remember to remember these. Uh, and, we and we start every presentation with these because, because when, when we have a conversation about school finance, school finance it's, really it's really easy to get lost in numbers, numbers and forget, and forget about, about what we are really talking about here. here. So, so all of our presentation material, material are rooted in the fact that ultimately kids, kids schools, and communities are the epicenter of everything we do. So we're, so we're going, going to, to talk, talk about, about Alex's story, story today, today. Uh, but, before um, but before we talk about, about Alex, um, we, um, we want you to understand a few things um, regarding per pupil expenditure. expenditure. When we talk, talk about per pupil expenditures in this presentation, um, it's important, it's important to, understand to understand that currently Connecticut, Connecticut doesn't require, require um, revenues, revenues or, expenditures or expenditures to be reported at the school level. level. So what does so that mean? Well what, well, what that means is that, is that well, while there can be, and there are multiple, multiple elementary, elementary schools, schools in any community, community Connecticut doesn't, doesn't have those elementary schools report their per pupil expenditures independently. So when we look at the district, we have to take that average um, per pupil spend, spending. Um, so. It would be helpful, helpful um, and certainly what we know is that districts don't allocate resources equally. 
Um, so, um, so, so, so understand, understand that we that talk we about, our, about our per pupil expenditures, expenditures. Um, the, number the number is going to vary. If you go to, go to a school and you talk, talk to the principal, you drill, drill down in the budget. budget. Now, right now the restriction is at the state level, level um, where schools, schools, schools don't report that. that. Um, and um, and can you'll I ask a question related to that? Sure, um, sure. So within a district, the, um, if I'm understanding you correctly, they will fund elementary schools. Let's just use that as an example because there's generally multiple elementary schools. Differently, and what typically goes into those decisions on how they allocate those resources? In every, in every district, district it's different, it's different. The, 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 how, they how they prioritize and, and choose, how, choose to how to distribute resources. Is, is really, but really would resources be teachers? Materials, teachers, materials, materials, materials all, all of that. All of that. Okay. And, and, really, and really, when you think, think about it, it um, certainly, um, certainly just if we talk, if we talk about, about teachers at the elementary school, school level, level. Um, if, an elementary um, if an elementary school is um, highly staffed, highly staffed with teachers who have been even at that school, even at that school for decades, for decades. Um, and another, um, elementary, and another school elementary school would have, have newer teachers, newer who, teachers have who have been in the district, been in the district for two or three years. years. Simply from a salary, from a salary perspective, perspective their, salaries their salaries are different, and so the resource allocation and ultimately what boils down, boils down to the per pupil spending at those schools is going to be different. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, um, that, so hopefully that helps. Help clear it up for everybody else too. So here's, so here's Alex. Alex, Alex lives in Danbury and is a third grader, and he, and he wants to be a doctor when he grows up. Um, um, it's exciting. It's exciting. My, son My son is in second grade, grade and doesn't, doesn't know, know what he wants to be, be but, um, you know, you know Alex, Alex has high aspirations, aspirations and we're going to help get him there. get there. So the question, so the question is, is well, how much does Alex's school, Alex's school, school district to educate him? And the answer, and the in, the answer in the state of Connecticut is it truly depends on where he lives. So we're, so going, we're to going to look at funding for, funding for Alex at three similar, similar school, districts. school districts. And I want to be, I want very, to be clear. very clear about this. These, These are, not are not adjacent. So we're not so taking, we're not taking Danbury, Danbury Ridgefield, and Bethel, and Bethel for instance, because, because while, while they're in geographic proximity, proximity those, those districts are not the same demographically. So what we, so what we try to do is, is make sure, sure that we are doing our best to compare apples to apples. So in this case, Danbury, Stanford, and Norwalk. And, and, and if we start by looking at Danbury, um, what, you'll um, what you'll see here, see here is spending, spending um, from or contributions, contributions from three different, different sources. And the first is the state. And the first is the state. So state, so state per people, uh, people provides three thousand two hundred and ninety-seven dollars to Danbury. Danbury, Danbury contributes through property taxes $8,872 per pupil. And then, and other, then contributions other contributions, which can include federal, um, federal dollars as well as any private grants attained by the district, um, is $559. So in Danbury, um, Alex has a fund source of $12,788. Um, to, to get, get educated. educated. And if he, and moves, if he to moves to Norwalk, Norwalk well, the state well, the contribution, contribution is $1,906. And, and let me just, let me toggle, just back toggle back a little bit, little bit because, because I know everybody's struggling, struggling with wanting to. Wanting to. So, there's so there's Danbury, $3,297. And again, Norwalk's state contribution is $1,906. Norwalk, Norwalk contributes $14,044 towards a child's education. And if we go back to Danbury, the contribution from Danbury is $1,872. So that's significantly different. Other contributions, Other contributions are, are, are not, not significantly different. different. Seven hundred and sixty-nine dollars in Milwaukee compared to the five hundred and fifty-nine in Danbury. So here we see, here we see again Danbury at twelve thousand seven hundred and twenty-eight dollars. And Norwalk at sixteen thousand seven hundred and nineteen. Remember, we remember we also said we could look at Stanford. 
So if we look so at, at Stanford, state contribution, state contribution is $1,915, which is relatively similar to Milwaukee's. Stanford's contribution is $14,919. Which again, is which again is relatively similar to Norwa, and, and other, other contributions, contributions um, more closely resemble Tenberry, $575. So the total um, per pupil in Stanford is $17,409, and we can make this really easy by taking a look at this chart, just looking across those comparisons. So again, Danbury is receiving almost $3,300. Per pupil, per pupil compared, compared to slightly, slightly over 1,900 per, per pupil from the state in Norwalk and Stanford. And the significant, and the significant difference is that, that town, town contribution at, at slightly, slightly less than, than 9,000 in Danbury and slightly, slightly over 14,000 in Norwalk and almost reaching 15,000 in Stanford. So when you, so look, when you at look at the range uh, uh, per, per pupil, we're looking, We're looking at, at a, a range, range from $12,728 to $17,409, just looking at three relatively similar communities. And so, and this, so is this is just a, a slightly, slightly different look at this. Well, um, graphically, you can see what the local per pupil contribution is, and that state contribution, and then that federal and um, other dollar amount there. So, Erica, a question that folks may have um, that jumps out at me, or one of the 15 times I've seen the presentation, but like I said, um, for those viewing this, um, watch this once, digest it, have more questions, and I know every time I hear Erica or, and or Katie speak, I always have new questions. But I know one question that comes out um, when you've done this in the past is what accounts for the Danbury having um, more state funding than um, Stanford or Norwalk in this slide? Sure. So and sure. And so we'll and and we'll break that down a little bit further on. on but um, the, the the rough answer, answer before we get to that is that, that um, the state, the state does, does consider um, what, a what a community's ability to pay is in how they, how they allocate funding. So, so um, their, their their calculations. Um, demonstrate, demonstrate basically that Danbury merits, merits, merits more state, state support than Walker Stanford. Uh, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll look into that. I know you are all now waiting for that slide. <laughs> um, but before we get there, let's just talk about property taxes um, for a second. Because if we're talking about local contribution, um, the, the way in Connecticut communities are able to raise money um, is by property taxes. So if we look at a $200,000 home in each of those communities, communities the property the property Property taxes um, in Danbury would be $1,015. In Norwalk, it's $3,500. And in Stanford, it's $3,657. So um, that's when Alex's family is looking at which community they choose and how they choose. Part of it, we all look at that, is what are our taxes going to be? The question, the question is really, is really why, why for, all for all of this. When we look, when we at, look this, at this, you have to wonder why. Why, why is, is there this difference? Why is, why is there a difference in Alice's funding? funding? So, so um, we, need to talk we need to talk first about, about education, education and where all, all the responsibility is. is. So, so education, education is not a fundamental, fundamental right, right under the United States Constitution. Constitution. Um, um, public, public schools uh, fall under the authority of the state and are, and are funded through state and local tax, tax dollars predominantly. And we saw that when we looked at those three communities. Um, um, all, all 50 states, states have concluded that children, that children have, a have a right to a free public, public education, education under, their under their state's constitution. constitution. So, so this is this a state-level state level issue that we are looking at. And when we, and when talk, we about talk about dollars, dollars that bears out, um, it will be look at where, where, where do we get our money in Connecticut? Um, um, and when you and look at it, education, education annually in Connecticut, in Connecticut is ten and a half billion, billion dollar budget. budget. Um, that's, um, a that's a lot of money. 
And, and when, we, when talk we talk about federal sources, that's, that's a very top green line there. And, um, and um, it, is it is only half a half billion. billion. Um, um, and not to not minimize that, that, but in the, in the, in the scope of things, things, it's about 4%. About 4%. And, um, and um, that money is most specifically tied to, to uh, specific initiatives, initiatives um, more, more closely tied to, tied to IDEA, IDEA especially especially funding, 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 as well as, well as um, support, support for low-income low schools. schools. So, so um, it's not just, not just a bucket of what you, what you want with it money. Um, when you look at that very large chunk, $5.9 billion, dollars, that's local sources. So that's 169 communities in Connecticut determining what they want to allocate to education. Um, and because of that, it's 169 decision-making bodies going into that $5.9 billion. That $4.1 billion there, that is state money. And that, and that has actually just one decision-making authority, which is the legislature with the governor um, approving that or not. So um, we're going to look most closely at that $4.1 billion. Um, and, then um, and there you have federal that funding federal funding is less than 5% in Connecticut, in Connecticut. And, that and that is not the case in all states, but in Connecticut, but in Connecticut it, it, it is the number. Um, and federal, federal education, education funding, funding, like I said, is restricted to um, programs that um, have very specific purposes. So children with disabilities, um, English learning, low-income children. Um, so state and local funding, 96% of the money we spend. And our state and local elected officials get to decide how that money is spent. So, so, so the question that we start, that we start with is really, is really why should we fund students based on their learning needs? Because right, because now, right now in Connecticut, we don't. We don't. Um, um, and we want to start with equality versus equity. equity. And I'm sure and that when you look at this slide, we've seen it. We've all seen it on Facebook, Facebook or somebody has shown it to us or different versions of this. Of this. Um, um, and what I hear in hearing from folks is that, that you know, they're, they're not, not sure what equity is. Equity, is. equity, equity kind of crept into, crept into the vernacular. Now, and now people, people don't know, is equality a bad thing? Are we only supposed to shoot for equity? And so I just want to differentiate. Equality, equality is really, is really seamless. So when we, so when talk, we talk, talk about education, education funding and resources, and resources we're, talking we're talking about inequality giving, giving every child, child the same. So, so say, we, say we pick a number, $5,000 $5, per child. Every, every child, child, regardless of their learnings, we get that. Get that. People, people come, people to, come to me and say, would that work? Is that, is that, is that equality? equality? Is that equity? Is that equity? That's equality, giving everybody the same. But the, but the reality is, is all kids don't, don't need the same. same. So when we, so when look, we look at, at giving children the ability to see over, over that fence, um, uh, really, we, really realize we realize that some children, children are in a position where they can see without, without additional resources. resources. And, and some, children some children need significantly, significantly additional resources. resources. So, so that's, that's equity. equity. And, and through equity, we ultimately attain equality where every child can look over the fence. Um, so, specifically, so specifically, when we talk, when we talk about, about those resources, we're talking, we're talking about, about allocating them for children with three distinct types of learning needs. And, and um, um, I always start at the bottom of the slide, Mary knows this, from sitting through any of these, because the first, because the first one is um, students, students with disabilities. disabilities. And what we recognize is that children um, with disabilities come to school with distinct learning needs and additional learning needs. And and um, um, the, range the range when we talk about, about students with disabilities is very, very, very broad. So, so it could be a child, a child who may um, need some speech therapy, therapy and it may be for a very finite period of time. Period of time. And, there, and there, may some there may be some children who have um, significant need needs that may require adaptive technology, technology or a one-on-one -on -one professional, professional, professional with them. So this is these are very broad span. Um, and so, and what, we so what we know is, is when a child with some, some disability, some, some level of disability comes into a classroom, they're going to require additional resources. 
English learning English students, learning students um, also, um, also require, require additional resources. resources. When we think about a teacher in the classroom working with a child who um, is challenged in to learn English at the same time they're learning their material and their subjects. Um, this, requires um, this requires additional resources. resources. It may be a uh, teacher, it may be software, it may be books or curriculum materials, but it requires additional resources. And, and finally, finally students, students from a low-income low family. Um, um, and a low-income low income family, family can, can impact, impact a child in a really broad, really broad variety of ways. ways. So this, this can lead to unstable, unstable housing. housing. They may be doubled or tripled up, up living with family, um, not having their own space. They may be, they may be food insecure. Um, they may not, may not have, have the parental support, support that they need because parents are, are, are stressed and stretched by, by multiple, multiple jobs. Um, they, they have, have um, 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 great Likelihood greater likelihood of being, of being exposed, exposed to traumatic, unsafe situations, situations and absent from school. All these all things, things um, require, require additional, additional support. support. And it may, it may just be in the, in the form of a social worker work check 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 checking in with a child, and it may be much more significant. So, so I point these I point out, out to say to that, that um, currently, currently in, the in the state of Connecticut, Connecticut we're not we're not connecting student learning, student learning needs to funding, to funding in, any in any way, shape, or form. So, so um, um, at, at, at one, one point, point, and at the most point of having, having, a, having a formula, we did connect students, students from a low, from a low income family, family with funding. With funding. Uh, uh, currently, currently, we aren't. We aren't. So, so none, none of these needs are gaining additional, additional and it's important to, to point out, I think, that a large percentage of the student population in Danbury Public Schools particularly have one, if not all, of these Correct. challenges and require multiple interventions and support. Correct. Correct. And, 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 and so right now, now um, they're, not, they're, not, they're not funded for those. For those. They're simply um, one, one basic per pupil, per pupil dollar, dollar amount that, that is allocated. Is allocated. So the question, so the question first, first is like, is like you, you can hear it say, say, well, yeah, all, yeah, of, this, all of this, I understand, I understand but does it, but really, matter? Does it really matter? And, um, and um, I'm not going to walk everybody through this slide. I'm going to tell you yeah. um, in, very in very general, general terms, it does, it does matter. matter. Um, for, for decades, decades uh, uh, the research was that it, said it didn't, didn't matter. matter. And, and in the last, in the last 15 or so years, years we're seeing um, significant, significant research that indicates, indicates in fact, in fact it, does it does matter. And it most, most significantly matters to children, children in urban districts. Urban, districts and, and children, children in low-income low situations and, and poverty. So, so um, we know, we know at this at point, this point it, does it does matter. matter. Scholarly the scholarly debate has, has shifted. shifted. And, and um, so that's, so that's significant. significant. We talk about, we talk about really, significant really significant leaps with the appropriate funding for children. For um, so, so let's look, let's look really, really closely at, at the state and at Danbury, and, and I think Mary pointed, pointed it out, you know, we need to talk about the demographics here in Danbury. Here in Danbury. So, so first, first understanding of the state, um, in the state, in the, state number the number of students in Connecticut has declined um, in, public um, in public schools. So, so um, closer, closer to 580,000, now, now very close to 540,000. Danbury, Danbury is the seventh, is the seventh largest, largest district in the state. In the state. Um, so, um, so there you are in the red, red there with 11,157 pupils in 2015-2016 school, school year. Um, um, Danbury, Danbury public, public schools enrollment has, has increased consistently over the last 10 years. years. So recall, that's, that's not the trend, trend that we're seeing across, across the state. state. Um, you and Danbury are bucking the trend, and that number is increasing. Danbury's Danbury school age population is expected to continue to increase and increase 13.68% over the next decade. So essentially, what you can take away here is that this isn't changing anytime soon. Danbury tomorrow is not going to have a sudden population decline um, in any way that we can anticipate. 
So student, so student need, need is also increasing in Darien, and, and, and we can look at three different lines here. The free and reduced price lunch, which is the current metric of children living in low-income and poverty situations, and you'll see that's increased um, in Connecticut. Um, you'll see in special ed, the numbers have increased slightly, and for English learning students, it's nearly consistent um, with very slight growth, and that's in the state of Connecticut, but let's look at, let's look at Danbury. In Danbury, and Danbury student poverty has um, almost doubled over the last, over the last 10 years. years. And, and um, um, every, every time, time I talk about this, this what people point out is that, is that there, this, this increase, if you look specifically, you look specifically at OE, is where you see that, that very sharp jump. And, and um, absolutely. absolutely, and we right. see that in every district. Um, the, um, the percentage of low-income students, Danbury serves, has increased almost 25 percentage points. Look at that. Uh, when, when you look and, look and translate that to a classroom, a classroom of kids, kids. Remember, remember when I started, I started this, I said that it was kids, kids schools, schools, and communities that were the most important, important right? So, so if, we if we take that 54 percent, I, I want you to think about it in terms of kids in the classroom. One in, one in every two children is living, is living in a low-income low situation in the classroom in Danbury. Um, that, that, that's huge. And, and Danbury serves um, a, higher a higher percentage of English learning students than similar, similar districts. So 23 percent. And again, and again let's, let's translate that and not get lost in numbers. numbers. Let's, let's translate, that translate that back to kids in a classroom. In a classroom. So, so we already so said one in every two children is living is living in a low income situation. Well, one, in well, one in every four also has an English learning need. So Mary, going back to what you said, yeah. Kids in Danbury, Danbury. 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 That's yeah. huge. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and when I mean, you when you just, you know, translate, you know, translate that, that again back to kids, kids right? right? In, in, in East, East Hartford, Hartford rather, rather than looking, other than looking at one in every four children, 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 children having English learning needs, you're looking, looking at one in ten. Um, if, you're um, if you're a teacher in that classroom, that's a significant difference. So, again, going to keeping the conversation about kids and classrooms, schools, yeah, that's a very very large number. So, so despite, despite growing needs, Danbury spends less than similar districts and the state average. So, so there you see the state average, state average in green at 16,249. And what you're looking at are relatively, relatively similar districts. districts. So um, from Stanford and Norwalk in our initial discussion, and to include Waterbury, Meriden, and East Harvard. Um, you'll see, um, you'll see Danbury, Danbury at 12,344 12, per pupil. Um, um, and what, and what, I, what I really, really love, love about this, and Mary, and Mary knows, knows this from every time she's been through a presentation with me, is that down at the bottom, you can see those uh, subgroups and, and understand, understand a little bit better what each district, each district is grappling with, with um, so that you, um, so that you can find a clearer um, comparison. So free and reduced price lunch. English learning, English learning and special, special education students, students um, down, um, down, down at the bottom. The bottom. And so, and so when, when we look first, first right, just, right, just at the bar graph, and you look at that state average of 16,249, 16, um, you see, you see a, a, significant a significant difference very clearly between that and where Danbury is. But then you, but then also, you also have to look at the, the um, student need, the need the distinct, distinct learning need. need. Then when we talk about free and reduced price lunch or children in low-income um, um, and poverty situations, that's 54% in the state average, 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. 
um, um, English learning. learning. So this mirrors so where, where it goes to where you, you, know, you <laughs> said, you know, know our but, but thought, that thought that one in every four children was what was, was pretty normal. normal. Well, well, the state, the state average, average is 6%, and, and what um, comparable, comparable districts, districts are experiencing is significantly lower, lower, lower as well. As well. And, then and then special education, um, students, students in Danbury, 13% the state average is 14%. So your so hunch, hunch would be right at if you were looking at students with special, special education needs. Um, so, so that helps, just helps, I think, drill down a little bit more into an apples to apples comparison. And so I have a question that you may have the answer to or not. But uh, in terms of special education needs or accessing special education, is it um, more, less, or not different um, in terms of accessing special education for your child, depending on funding? How much funds much are available are to a available. specific district? Well, <laughs> well I would I would say, say that, that um, diagnosis, diagnosis uh, like identification, identification of a child, of a child with, with uh, special, uh, special education, education needs, and then, and then the, the resources, resources and support for that. That, um, that, that process is independent of a funding, of a funding choice, choice or a funding, funding system, system. Um, um, and, it's, and also it's also done by each, each district. district. So, um, so it's not necessarily tied. Correct. 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 Certainly, Certainly though, though, um, you can um, say that, but, that, but it, has it has a significant impact, impact right? right? So, so um, it, 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 it's a complex, complex ball of yarn to unravel, but um, the identification, the delivery, the delivery of services, and the funding, and the funding for those services, services are, are identification, identification is not meant to, to be tied to funding. funding. Um, um, when we look at per pupil spending, Danbury's is the lowest in Connecticut. And you can go on our website and actually see all of these communities. Um, and you'll see that Cornwall um, is the highest in per pupil spending in Connecticut at $30,191. And then there's the area at the bottom at $12,794. So um, the span is pretty huge, huge. Um, across, across the state. And I just want to point out, though, again, when, again, we, when we look at these numbers, right, there are a few things that go into it. And, and remembering it's the federal pot of money, the state, and the local contribution. Um, and Cornwall um, is, almost is almost entirely, entirely supported for the local, local things. So, so if we were to, we were to look at their bar graph, graph of where money is coming, money is coming it's from, it's going to look very differently than Danbury's. And I think, and that's, I think really that's really important. Just curious, what, remind me um, what towns encompass Region 12? Off the top, Off the top of my head, of my head um, um, I'm, I'm not sure. sure. I, I, get, back, get back to it. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got now the we've team. Done the <laughs> Everybody, everybody looking for that, which is great. Um, that um, that's why they use it all the region. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. There are a lot of them, so we'll find that out. Um, and while, and while, while everybody's, while everybody's looking, looking, we're going to talk more specifically about Danbury and then pop back to that. Um, um, so state and local, so state and local communities share the responsibility, responsibility for funding local, local public, school public school districts. districts. And what you're, and what you're seeing here is the entirety of um, funding and basically, basically the, the total revenues for public local public schools. schools. And this, this, kind, of just this kind of just breaks out um, not, just um, not just the local, state, and federal, federal that we've been speaking to, but, but really, really also understanding, um, understanding that in that um, mishmash, um, mishmash of school funding. There's also some construction, school construction um, which is a separate identification of funding. In kind, In kind local contributions. contributions. Those are contributions that a uh, um, community, community may make to support, support the, the uh, education, education district. district. Um, in a variety of ways, whether it's use of space, space to snow, snow removal, removal uh, things, things that a town may do for the schools that have a value. And then, and then tuition, tuition and kind of that other. So, so um, 
just understanding, just understanding that, that these are, are huge, huge breakouts, breakouts of, of numbers, of numbers and that, that um, well, well, while we can simplify on a local, local, local level, level the local, local um, state, state and federal dollar, there's, a, there's um, a few more strands here. So district, so district funding, funding sources, sources differ greatly across Danbury's pure towns. And this is one of those things where when we spoke, we spoke about Cornwall, Cornwall looking, looking at you know, what that bar graph would look like, like. understanding that well, Danbury is, is the lowest funded per people, people in the state at $12,728. Um, those um, those contributions in some of the pure towns, towns are very different in where they're coming from. Yeah. And that uh, you when you look at New York, you know, contributing over 14,000 in the same of Stanford um, through local property taxes, and, and the state is contributing less. less. And when you look at Waterbury, um, the state is contributing um, significantly more than they are to Danbury. So this is just that visual. Um, and, um, and you'll notice, I just want to point out on here, too, too that, that um, East Hartford's bar graph looks slightly different, slightly different because you see the tuition there, um, the whole bar, 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 bar at the graph at the top. The top. Um, and, and East Hartford, East Hartford has, has a significant, significant number of magnet schools, schools. Um, um, they're in the CHEF uh, region, which is the CHEF decision on um, school desegregation in Hartford. So that's, that's um, why you're seeing that there. Um, understanding, um, understanding state funding, funding um, for, public for public schools, schools and how it now. now. Um, just, um, just understanding, understanding that, that there, there, there are, there are um, Grants, grants made that, that fit into, into significantly, significantly different categories. categories. So, so starting, starting from, the from the bottom, that blue, that blue is, is the uh, uh, ECS or Education Cost Sharing, sharing and Alliance, Alliance District, District grants. grants. Um, we, have um, we have school building, building projects. projects, we have magnet schools, schools. Special, special education, education excess cost grant, grant, that very thin purple bar there is, um, is um, for expenses, expenses that go, that go significantly above and beyond four, four times the per pupil cost. Um, um, oh yeah, I got the answer to that. Okay. okay, and oh, I, have oh, I have the answer for you all. For you all. Hold on, I'm going to pop back here and just, and just tell you that the answer to regional district 12 is Bridgewater, Roxbury, and Washington. So a big shout out to those communities if they're watching or if you have friends there. Um, um, it actually just says by way of follow-up when we're looking, um, there actually is an interesting article in our local um, newspaper in the News Times, a tale of two schools, Danbury and Region 12, so it may include that link um, to our the DSADC website if folks are interested. Um, and it's, and it's worth it's, it's, uh, yeah. yeah. And if you're, and sitting, if you're sitting through this webinar, it's certainly worth looking, looking at, looking at that or as well. As well. Um, um, and again, you'll see charter, charter schools very that very small, small light, light blue line, line um, school, readiness school readiness and severe need. So, so that's at the um, early, early ages. Priority, priority school districts and then other grants, which individually, individually are less than a million and in total are a larger chunk. So, so Danbury, Danbury received $3,297 in education funding from the state. Um, and this slide, slide just shows you the state average is $3,854, so Danbury is slightly below that. that. And then you see some of the peer communities getting significantly more than that. Um, um, so so here, here, here's part, part of this, of this. The, reason the reason that we're here. Right? Danbury, right? Danbury receives relatively low state funding, funding based on the needs of its in the, town, in the town's property well. well. And, and, and ultimately, ultimately this is because the school finance, finance um, system isn't funding, isn't funding community equitably. equitably. Go, back go back to the slide of children, children looking over the fence and understand, and understand communities, communities uh, are trying to look over the fence as well. So how, so how does the state, state determine, determine how much money each, each should, get? should get? There's 11, There's 11 different, different formulas. formulas. Um, and, and basically, basically each, each type, type of school has, has its own funding, funding formula. formula. The formula, the formula that distributes, that distributes the, the most, most amount of money is the education cost sharing formula, or ECS. Yes. And that, and that distributes, distributes about $2 billion in state education funding to public schools each year. 
So when we go so back, we go back and we think about that slide, slide that, said, that said, you know, you know, four point one billion was uh, state funding. Well, well, just in um, the education cost sharing formula, one of those, one of those eleven formulas is two billion or half of the state money. Here's your Here's eleven. Your 11 in different formulas. formulas. ECS, ECS or education cost sharing, is for traditional schools. Um, schools. Um, and depending and where, depending you where you are in the state, they're local called local schools, schools and neighborhood schools, schools, or traditional, or traditional public, public schools. schools. Charter, schools Charter schools have two different formulas, formulas one for state and one for local. There's, There's the technical high school system, <coughs> the regional agri-science centers. And then, and then let's look, look at, at magnet, magnet schools. schools. There, are there are five magnet school formulas. Okay. So who's, who's hosting, hosting it? Who's running, running that magnet school? Where, where it's located? It's located in, it's in the Chef region and Hartford or um, not in the Chef region of Hartford. It doesn't matter. matter. Um, but the but ECS, the ECS is, is supposed, supposed to determine how much, how much money the state, um, the state is going to give to each city and town to fund its public schools. Um, just I'm just flipping back, flipping back very quickly. quickly. We, have we have this formula because in 1977, in a Connecticut Supreme, Supreme Court decision, Horton versus Maskell, it was determined that an education funding system, system that allows very wealthy, wealthy, wealthy towns to spend more on education, on education with less, with less effort. effort is, a is a system that impedes children's constitutional rights, rights to be in education. education. And remember, remember at the beginning, beginning we talked about how this is a state right. right. Um, and, so and so in 1988, so um, 1977 was that decision. In 1988, Connecticut established the education cost sharing formula. And this, and this is supposed to balance things out and make up the difference between what a community can afford to pay and what it really costs to run a public school system. And there are three, there are three components, components to the ECS formula. The foundation. the foundation. How much does it cost, much does it cost to educate, to educate, a, child? educate a child? Um, the, um, the number of number new of students, students, in students in the district. In the district. Um, how many how many students, students um, at this point at this point are, are low income situation situation events? And then the base and then the base aid ratio, which is, which is, uh, is, a, calculation is a calculation of each community's ability to financially support education. Support education. So if we look so at if it, we, look at it we take the foundation, the number of new students, and the base age ratio, and come out with the number that would be the time entitlement to the CS grant. There's some problems. There's some problems. As you may have, you may have already asked, um, the, only um, the only problem is trying, trying to decide which one, which one is the bigger problem <laughs> with this <laughs> formula. So the, so the first one, one is that it doesn't fund, fund all students, students based on their, on their learning needs. Um, I said, I said in, the, in the most recent iteration, recent iteration of the formula, it, it did include uh, uh, a metric, for metric for low income, low income students. students. But, but learning, learning students, students and students with disabilities are not included um, with additional funding for their learning needs. The second, the second thing, thing is that the state, state can't fully fund the CS formula. formula. So, so if um, it took all, all the numbers from that formula that it put out and uh, actually distributed those dollars to the communities, Connecticut would spend $600 million more than what they're spending right now. Um, and what we do know, know is that um, Connecticut is in a fiscal crisis, and, and um, um, we're, not we're not finding $600 million dollars time soon, time soon to fully, fully fund the yes, ECS formula. formula. And, and Connecticut, Connecticut doesn't have enough money to pay each city and town the amount it's owed, owed under yes. ECS. And uh, most, uh, most of the towns, towns are getting less money than they should. Than they should. Of course, this is of a good course, one. This is a good um, one. So, um, I, can so I can tell you all the reasons that, that the formula is flawed, but ultimately, but ultimately um, they uh, stopped using it in 2014. We can look at it, but, but, but one, one, one of the one of the problems, problems, problems is they're not using, not using it. it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. 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 Um, um, you know, it's, it's no longer, it's no longer I mean, there are bigger, bigger problems, right? Problems, right? So, so if they're not they're not using it, your question should be, well, so, so how are how we doing, are we doing this? this? This is half, half of the state, state allocation, allocation of dollars, of dollars um, $2, billion. Um, $2 billion. And so, so now, now um, 
the, the state, state aid, aid through, through education, education caution does not change as a result of uh, uh, say in Danbury, Danbury the growth, the growth of the student of the population. population. So while your so population, population of students is growing, growing. That support, that support from the state, from the state does, does not change. Not change. It, is it is not connected, connected to the learning needs of students. So again, so if we again, look back at, 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 at um, the um, English learning needs of students, students or low-income low students, students. Um, um, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't take, that take that into consideration. consideration. Um, and it and also, it doesn't also doesn't take into consideration the community's ability to pay any longer. And instead, and instead um, it's, um, it's distributed, distributed as a block as grant. grant. And, and um, grant amounts grant amount are, are increased or decreased on a percentage based basis. Um, um, and the starting, and starting point is what you, is got, what last you got last year. year. And the starting, the starting point, point initially, initially is what you got in 2020 when, when this all this stopped. So the result, so the result is an equitable. Um, um, some are some getting more, are getting some communities are getting more, more than they're entitled, they're entitled to, to, and a lot are getting, getting less, less than they're entitled, they're entitled to. to. So, so Rotten, Rotten is getting, is getting 3 million, million more than, than they, they should, should, should get the formula, formula, which is 18%. 18 percent. And, and Danbury is getting 30 million, million less, 49 percent less than they're entitled to under the formula. And, and, and this, and this um, um, inequity, in, we can we see can specifically with communities, communities with similar, with similar needs, needs see through different, different amounts of state aid. State aid. So, um, uh, I love, I love the, example the example of New Britain and Hartford, Hartford, Hartford because if you flash back, flash for, a back for a minute to the slide, the slide that also showed the showed the breakdown of, of uh, free and reduced uh, price lunch, lunch uh, students with special education, uh, education needs and English, and English learning. learning, the subgroup sub percentages, percentages uh, in New Britain, Britain and Hartford are nearly identical. Um, within, um, within one percentage, percentage point, point, or perhaps, perhaps two percentage two points, points, but nearly, nearly identical. identical. And yet and there's, yet uh, there's uh, more than more five thousand dollars difference, difference in funding, in funding uh, from the state, state for those two student communities. Um, and, um, and, 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 part and part of the challenge is that ECS formula, ECS formula only, applies only applies to local, applies to local public, schools. public schools. So other so types, other of, types schools, of schools as you saw, uh, are funded using other formulas. Um, and just, um, to, and be just clear, to be clear, you see, there's, no there's no correlation, correlation between, between the percentage, percentage of income students to district districts and, and per pupil expenditure. So um, there's, um, there's the Danbury area and this is a matter of free and reduced lunch, lunch students. Um, um, and, and then the, the, the education costs. Cost. And, and there, there's, there's, there's zero correlation. correlation. There's also, There's also no, no correlation, correlation between the percentage, percentage of English learners, English learners in district districts and, and, per, and per pupil expenditure. expenditure. So, so um, when, when there's, no there's no correlation, there's, there's a concern, concern and there's, there's no, no, no methodology. methodology. So, so how does, how does this impact cities and towns? Well, well as I said, and I said the under the under less than they should be less than they should be under ECS. If you look, and if you look, um, the most the town most should the get town based on the ECS, ECS formula, formula 61 million, 438,000, 434 dollars. Um, ECS, ECS funding, funding in 2016 17 um, was. was 31 million, 31 million, 500,000, and 480. And then rescission happened um, in late December. And that and shifted, that shifted it, it so that the area is now getting 31 million, 290,000, dollars um, And you and can you see can this for other communities as well. As well. And, and like, like I said, I said there, there are two communities that are getting more and more picked on Groton and two slides, slides ago at 18% above, above, but um, you can um, look, you can look at, at Stonington, Stonington and 53% percent above. above. They're entitled, entitled to, uh, but, it, uh, but it's also, it's also important, important to just note in this conversation. conversation. You can look at you the dollars, at the dollars over the percentage, and, percentage and, percentage. and those, and those are, are those are different. And we need to, we need to understand, understand, right? That um, um, Danbury, Danbury is getting ninety-nine percent less funding. Pop pop back to the slide, slide, right? right? That's like like over thirty million, million less, less than it should, and forty-nine percent. If we, if we look at, at Stonington's Stonington percentage, percentage of 53 percent overfunded, that doesn't that mean doesn't that if we cut if we them back, back you know, right. Danbury is all sad, right. yeah, exactly. because that's because only half a million. So I think that's just, that's just an important thing to point out to folks. To folks. 
So, so uh, uh, you've got to be wondering, be wondering at this point, point okay, so how do we how do we how do we decide how much how much is school just to use? And they said, they said it's historical process. process. So that's so where that's we where start. we start. What type what of type school, school is it? Is it? It's a magnet, magnet and it's if charger, charger, if it's a local, if it's a local district, district school. school. Um, um, they're all they're different, all different formulas. formulas. If your school were in the Hartford region, it is a different way treated than if it's in Danbury. And political political. Power matters. matters. So, so communities, communities with powerful, powerful political leaders are more likely, more likely to receive funding, funding increases. Um, that's the nature of the system when you stop using a formula. formula. Uh, yeah. And, um, and I just want to just point, want to point out, out that, that with special, special education funding, funding, we talked, talked about the Xbox cost grant. Um, um, which kicks, which kicks in, in once a child child's expense in a district term greater than greater four and a half, and a half times, times what the per pupil, pupil, pupil spending is in that district. Um, um, but the excess but the cost, cost, cost isn't fully funded, funded, funded either. either. So <laughs> even when you <laughs> hit you that, hit that doesn't that mean that you're all set, set and now the state, state is going to fully fund that. So I think that's just an important piece to pick up pick there, up there. And, that, and that the other piece, piece that no matter no matter what school the school child child attends local, school local school district, 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 district is still is responsible, still responsible for special education, education costs. costs. Um, um, and local and funding, local funding right? that that big right, chunk that, that big chunk of 5.9 million that, that, I told that I told you comes from decision making in every community in Connecticut. Danbury, Danbury taxpayers tax contribute eighty eight hundred and seventy two dollars for students. For students. So, when so when you're paying your, paying your um, um, car tax, car tax and your and house your tax, taxes, is, this, this is, is where it's where it's going. Um, and basically, basically here's, here's, here's how they're, how they're deciding, deciding what we need from taxpayers, taxpayers, right? Right. They're right. They're determining what the budget, what the budget is. is. What do they, what do they need to spend, need to, spend um, um, to run, to run effect the school district? district. Yeah. 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 Cut, out Cut out the federal revenue, revenue, and, the revenue and the state revenue, and that is, that is what is left is what, is what, what the district, district uh, needs, um, needs to contribute, the municipal, the municipal contribution. contribution. Um, it's um, important it's to just understand, just understand who's deciding, who's deciding this. And that and the, that superintendent the superintendent of schools, schools is recommending, is recommending a, school a school budget to the Board of Education. Board of Education, Board of Education, Board of Education uh, may tweak it up, it up or, down, or down, and ultimately, ultimately they send it to the city council governing, governing body. body uh, and it's part, and of, the it's part of the budget. And, and so, so uh, there, are um, there are multiple opportunities, opportunities for people, for people to, weigh to weigh in. in. So Mary, so Mary tell, tell me this. I'm going to ask you a question, a question now. now. Um, so as so we go, as through, we go through this process, process in, in Danbury, you don't you go don't to referendum, right? right? They just they decide. They just decide. The, the city council decides. Great. Great. So, 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 so yeah, this, yeah, is, this an is an important question, question because uh, some communities have a have vote after all this. Right. So, so Board of Ed decides, decides and a city council decides, decides and, and then um, it, goes um, it goes out for a vote for, a vote for, the, for the taxpayers. The taxpayers. Um, um, and in Danbury, that doesn't happen. That still means, so still that, means there that there are multiple opportunities to be involved in the process and an opportunity to really understand the budget. And that's why I think. Um, it's important to get this information out yeah, yeah. Um, because um, the way our process works in Danbury, I think sometimes parents and community members aren't quite sure how to weigh in and have a voice. And it's not that there's an opportunity, but it's sort of just not organic. So, um, you know, the more opportunities that we can get information out to folks and to get involved in a variety of ways is Great. So I think this slide is very helpful. And this process, and this process is happening, is happening now. Yeah. now. Yeah. Um, this is happening right now. So, <laughs> so, so this is this extremely, extremely relevant. Yeah. It's, it's, it's um, happening, now. happening now. And there are plenty there are of plenty opportunities. You know, go you to a board of board meeting. meeting. Listen, Listen to the discussion. The discussion. Um, you know, ask, you know, ask questions. questions. If there are questions, questions you have on, on the choices, um, in trying to understand, to understand the, budget, the, the budget, that's really important. So you can participate all along this path. Um, um, and, and one of the questions, of the questions is, 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 is there a minimum, minimum budget amount, amount minimum, minimum budget, budget requirement? 
Intelligence, which also is also known, known as the MBI. And, and um, um, there, there was, was and there and is, is um, an alliance, an alliance district. So Danbury is one of one the alliance districts. districts. And um, um, what, what that means as far as, far as what a community can contribute is they can't, can't contribute, contribute less, less than, than they did, they last, did year. last year. So, so as a taxpayer, taxpayer if you were to decide that, that instead of instead that over $8,000 per student that the contributing, 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 who as a taxpayer, as a taxpayer that, that, you know, you know, that should that no should longer be Danbury's commitment, but instead it should be $4,000. The state is going to tell you that that's unacceptable. So, so understand, understand even getting involved in this process, in this process right, right here, here um, there are, there are limits, limits um, that the state, the state applies. applies. So cities so and towns, cities and towns raise the money through, through uh, um, property, property taxes. taxes. And one and of the one things, things that's that very, very important, important to understand, understand is, first of all, um, not, all not all property is to be as tax. So, so um, non-profit organizations, Hospital, hospitals, university churches, churches maybe exempt. Um, and the uh, other, and the thing, other thing, thing, I, I want people I want to understand, understand is that, that you're paying taxes, taxes even when you live in an apartment. apartment. So, so you may not you may own that property, property, but your landlord is paying taxes, taxes, and your landlord is passing that on to you as part, as part of your rent. Your rent. So, so um, um, I don't ever want ever people want to feel, feel like they don't have the right to have a voice. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, each city each and city town has a different has amount of property available to tax. tax. Um, um, that's the that's grant the list, list, the value, value and then they and set then they a tax rate called the, called the mill rate. Mill rate. And, and uh, um, the, value the valuing in the kinetic area varies, varies um, just, just uh, broadly. broadly. And you can so you see can that, that there. there. Um, and Danbury is holding its own right in the middle. But when we but look, when at, we it, look at it, they equalize in that, in that grand grand list list per capita, per capita is the value, the value of taxable property per resident. Per resident. Now, when, now we when we think back to where we started in this presentation, we think about Norwalk and Stanford, and, and we saw and that they were, that they were contributing, contributing over 14,000 14, to, to, to per pupil to education, and in Danbury it's very slightly, slightly over 8,800. Well, well, part of that, part of that is, due is due to the equalized grant list per capita. Per capita. I mean, we look at that, look at that Danbury, Danbury has constraints that, that are not the same as Norwalk and Stanford. Um, um, and mill, and rates mill rates vary, vary, right? right? So right. Tax taxable rate, rate. Yeah. Yeah. in Connecticut, in Connecticut goes as high as 7.29 and as low as 10.7. Um, um, and and Danbury's, Danbury's mill rate is, is, mill rate is, is right, in right in the middle. So, so again, again, when, when you think to those who are in Stanford, it's important, important to understand, understand those numbers, numbers and the roots of those numbers. numbers. Um, um, and so when so you look when you at, look at the what the mill rate is, is and what does that translate to, to um, taxes, taxes on a $200,000 dollar in Danbury are $4,000 and on a 2012 Honda Civic, it's $95. Um, so, um, so you'll find in the appendix, appendix just some information, some information on how to calculate, calculate expenditure sources, sources for uh, does, money does money matter. matter. And, and if you, if you really, really wanted, wanted to, to go, go through, through this funding, funding formula, formula <laughs> you can make, you it, make work. it work. Um, <laughs> there's, there's the math, the math behind, behind it. it. Um, that's, um, the, that's end the end of it. it. I, would I would encourage everybody, everybody again, again, if you if have questions, questions please um, email ERIAA.HAYNES at or you can hit the website at cctoolsfinance.org. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you, Erica, for presenting this um, very important information and I do encourage those who are interested in exploring this topic further to visit the Connecticut School Finance Project website. There is um, a broad array of information um, and also um, you can learn about ways that you can get involved um, in the process um, for uh, fair school funding. So thank you.